Hi, welcome to this video on Q Learning. Here we'll be teaching an AI algorithm to learn how to play the snake game. It will be very similar to how a child learns how to play this game. Q Learning is within reinforcement learning and Q stands for quality. My name is Dr. Sridhar Panat. I am a PhD from MIT and this lecture will be initially covering the theoretical aspects of Q Learning and followed by that we'll implement this whole thing in code. So welcome to this lecture. So obviously, you know how the snake game works. We have a snake that grows each time it eats a randomly placed food. And when it eats the food, of course, the food uh, disappears and it shows up elsewhere. When it eats the food, the length of the snake increases by one. And if the snake hits the walls or on, on its own tail, it will die. So that, so it's game over. So we have to define a few constraints if you want to make this game uh, possible to be trained uh, using an ML model. So we will define that there are three actions for the snake always. Uh, and this is the case with most of the snake games. You have the forward motion, left or right. So you have those three options. And then uh, what is not allowed is going back. Going back meaning if the snake is going, let's say, from left to right, you, you should not, you cannot press the left button to make the snake kind of go backward. So that's, that's not, that won't happen. And between two movements, uh, there is no waiting. Snake continuously goes. So if there's, if nothing is pressed for a few, no key is pressed for a few milliseconds, the snake will continue to move forward as, uh, all the snake games. And when additional thing here is, uh, to define the game over, usually it's a snake. Sometimes there are no walls. It's like a, if you go up, the snake will come back from the bottom or if it goes right through the wall, it will come uh, outside through, the, come inside through the left hand side wall. In this particular case, we'll be defining the walls as hard boundaries. So if the snake hits the wall, it will die. So these are the constraints that we will impose. So as I mentioned, Q learning, Q stands for uh, quality and uh, you will see what this means. It is within the it is a form of reinforcement learning algorithm and here what we are going to do is like we'll be maximizing the reward an agent grants uh, another entity or another thing called learner so to see what an agent and learner looks like you can take this example of a person training their dog so if you give the if you give your dog a biscuit uh, the dog will learn that oh this is a reward Right. So the dog is the learner and uh, the person or the trainer of the dog is the agent. If you punish the dog, I don't know, by by kind of um, being so not so nice with the dog or I don't know, beating the dog. I don't know what people do to train the dogs. But basically, if you if you give a negative reward or punishment, the dog learns that also. So very similarly in snake game also, we can do something, uh, something similar. So you are the agent and dog is the learner. If, if you are considering a dog and it's a, a trainer, on the other hand here, you will define an agent and you will define the learner and the learner will be a, basically a deep learning algorithm or a neural network. So this whole process in, uh, in reinforcement learning for this particular case, it will have a few different steps. They are very simple. You first observe your environment, meaning if you are, if you have the snake, if you have the food and the walls, you, you make an observation on what is the current state of the environment. Then, uh, based on the current state of the environment, you, you decide what action to take, whether to move forward, left or right, just like how a human plays the game. So when you are playing the snake game fast, it, you know, uh, inadvertent, advertently, you are basically taking these steps. Then executing that action after after deciding all of this happens in a millisecond inside our head. Then receiving reward or penalty or nothing. So if the snake has not hit the wall or the food or itself, there is neither reward nor, pen nor, nor penalty. If it hits uh, itself or it hit if it hits the wall, if the walls are rigid, the snake, it's a game over. So it's a penalty. If the snake gets the food, it's a reward, right? So this is also what's happening and from this experience you can play multiple games and that's how as a kid you became good at the snake game and this is how the the ml model will also become good at the snake game and you will see that so you iterate this again and again and again uh, basically making the the learner which is the machine learning model learn from many many such experiences so these are the different steps involved in the reinforcement learning now how do you mathematically define this whole thing this whole process what we just discussed before so you can define something called as state so state means all the 
different things that exist at a, at a, any given point of time the position of the snake where is it headed uh its location the location of the food and the general direction like what is top what is uh, bottom what is right and what is left and uh, how far is the snake from the wall if it takes one step forward will it hit the wall is is it dangerous etc so these this information can be uh, included in a variable called state and state can be represented by this uh, symbol s and based on the state you can also take an action action is denoted by a the action is very simple you have only three actions in this case you can either move forward move left or move right and when i say forward it 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 is with respect to the current direction of motion of the snake so if the current direction of motion is uh, downwards that means the forward for the snake is downward itself and left means to this direction and right means to this direction right according to the snake now um what we can do is we can calculate something called uh, the quality q of state 1 which is s1 and let's say the action a that is taken by you or the snake uh, will take you from state 1 to state 2 so state 1 is denoted by s1 and state 2 is denoted by s2 so you can define a uh, a quality for this particular um action and state pair so at any state you can take an action so for the for a given action state pair you can define a quality it's a it's a numerical it's it's basically a number uh and uh, we'll see in detail what exactly that means and based on this the uh environment right before taking an action it were it had a certain state and if the snake moves the environment will change what happens if the snake will eat the food the environment will change where the food is food is consumed and in the next step the food is food will be appearing reappearing somewhere else if the snake is hitting the the wall then the environment changes in such a way that maybe the game is over that is the change that is happening so basically a reward can be defined based on what change is happening to the to the state as a result of an action and the reward can be positive reward can be negative it can also be neutral and we can define the reinforcement learning algorithm in different ways either you your goal is to maximize the reward or you can define the goal to be minimizing uh, minimizing the reward if if the reward is a negative thing right so you can define it according to what you want in this particular case our goal will be to maximize the reward our goal is such that the um the goal of the learner that is the machine learning algorithm is to maximize the reward that the agent grants right that's the that's the idea here and mathematically we can represent this whole thing like this so for a given state s and a we can calculate the the q which is quality and we can modify it based on the maximum value so let me show you what these different variables mean so alpha is the learning rate right it is the rate at which uh, you uh, learn from the reward obtained and the maximum expected future reward and the difference between maximum expected future reward and the uh, uh, current q factor so q is the current quality value q value r is the reward so each state action pair has a reward max of max q of s prime comma a prime a prime is the maximum expected future reward um uh, for for another future state s prime and a future state a prime uh, gamma is the discount rate so do you know what this discount rate means it means um the value of getting this reward in the future is uh less compared to getting a reward in the present so that's why we have a discount rate and alpha is the learning rate and this is how we can calculate a new q value um so don't don't worry too much if you are not getting a great intuition behind this math uh, that's not a big deal but uh, just understand that mathematically this is how it is represented but logically it's very simple logically you are calculating the the q value for a given action state pair the action will modify the state from s1 to s2 and uh, this will also in as a result will change the q and how do you decide decide by how much should the q change or that is decided by all these parameters right it's as simple as that now let us have a brief look at what do we mean by the state of the game so when i say state of the game let's say the snake is like this the snake is uh, having this much length and it's moving downward and we can also define kind of directions north east south west let's say the food is here and the snake is currently moving in this direction right now we can ask a few questions is there danger in the straight direction so what is straight straight meaning just forward is there danger 
is there danger to the right is there danger to the left what about direction uh direction should is it west is it direction east is the direction north direction south meaning the current direction of go, movement of the snake is it in one of these directions is the food located westwards is the food located eastwards is the food located north or south now we can uh, answer these questions right danger is uh, there is no danger in fact uh, right left forward uh, there is no danger so uh, straight right and left the danger question is false the direction is currently southwards it's moving downwards right southwards so south will be true all the other three will be false then is there food uh, westwards no so west is here there is no food in the west in the north also there is no food but the food is generally located south and east right food is over here compared to snake so you have to generally go in this direction south east so that is why food is southward is is true and food is eastwards is also true now based on this uh, state you can take uh, you can also represent the state in as a vector um, and this will be like a one hot encoding where uh, false is, is represented as zero and true is represented by one uh, in fact actually it's not one hot encoding you are not just having uh, one of them to be one you you may have zeros or ones basically it's, it'll be like a, a vector that has zeros or ones if it's like a binary true or false kind of uh, um, states true or false kind, false kind of uh, values and based on this state you can take an action you can move east or south that's the ideal action that you as a human will take here but uh, the 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 action that the the learner will take um, will depend on what is the um, what is the q value and uh, what is the other ultimate uh, decision that comes out of the the learning algorithm sometimes the action also can be random we'll we'll see that it's called explore, uh, exploration so we'll see that in a moment but basically the state of the game very very well define uh, defines very well uh, in a set of numbers which is represented as a single vector uh, what the game looks like currently so if you want to know what the game looks like currently all you need to do is like see check this you can you can if you see this you will know where if there is an imminent danger or not if there is an imminent reward uh, or not it's i don't think it's easy to find but you you will generally know in which direction you have to go uh, if you want to get the reward okay now uh, how do we get the the new state and the corresponding reward so given the current state model makes a prediction what is the model it's the neural network neural network makes a prediction the prediction basically involves uh, let's say you have three actions to take right uh, left right and uh, forward for these three actions the neural network will predict an expected reward and based on this you can uh, and this will be like a vector a three by one vector or one by three vector depending on how you define your uh, shape of the vector but basically there will be three values and uh, using these three values you can take a decision whether to go to left right or forward in the exploration stage you will not listen to this um, um, values of these uh, re this reward vector you may also randomly take an action but in the that's in the exploration stage in exploitation stage you will almost always pick the one with greatest reward we'll see that uh, in in a couple of slides so basically initially the question is is the food eaten as a result of the this is to calculate the reward uh, after taking an action when you go from state 1 to, to state 2 the question is uh, as a result of this action was the food eaten if the answer is yes let's say we can increase the reward by 10 if the answer is no there is one more question was there a collision because collision means the snake is dead right if there was a collision if the answer is yes we will define a negative reward minus 10 if there was no collision meaning the snake just went in in that particular direction then it's overall a neutral movement nothing happened as a result of this this particular action so we define the reward to be zero so uh, this is reward and not the q factor the q or quality factor is different from the reward right reward is uh, fixed meaning uh, if the food was eaten this is the extra reward it will get if the if the snake was dead this is the reward otherwise zero but the q factor will depend on the state and the action and the, there are so many different states possible so there are so many different values of q factor also possible all right so now let's look at what the model is the model is the the entity that learns and the singular goal of the model is to predict the expected uh, q values for any given action so let's have a look at that 
So the input to the model, the model is a neural network. The input to the model is, uh, it can look like this. So you, you might already recognize what this is. It is, it is the vector that represents the state. So previously we had a column vector. Here we are just representing, representing it as a row vector. Does not matter what the representation is as long as it is suitable to the, to the input layer of the neural network. But basically this, the state, the current state is the input to the neural network. Now the, the function of this model, so input is the vector, the function of this neural network, which is the model, is to predict the best action <clears throat> given a state. And will the model be really good in the beginning to predict the best possible action? No, because initially the weights will be random. So the model will not know what is the best possible action to take. It has to uh, learn how to map from a given state uh, to a good set of rewards uh, so that or, or rather to a good set of Q values so that, um, you know, we can ultimately maximize the reward. So it takes a few number of iterations and a few number of inputs for the model to learn. So uh, basically it's like a, you can, you can think of it like a game of chess, right? So, so let's say you have a set of uh, moves uh, for your, um, your, all the, all the, all your players. And then the opponent is also playing against you. So if, for any given state that you are in, um, you have a best move possible. And the more you you play the chess in different, different scenarios and in, in different, different conditions, you will be more comfortable making the best possible move at a given point of time. Similarly, this neural network, the more it is exposed to different input uh, states and uh, the more it is accustomed to knowing what is the best possible Q values to predict, the better it will be, better equipped it will be to handle uh, a new input, which it may not have seen before, right? That's why the, the more number of games the agent makes the learner play, the, the better and better the learner will become. And what would the output look like? Output the vector Q value. Uh, it represents the expected reward for each possible action. And it can look something like this. It can be positive, negative, zero, depending on what the model is outputting. So here there are three actions possible. Snake can move left, right, or forward. That's why the, the dimension of the output is also three. It can be row or column, depending on how you are deciding to output it. And what is the agent actually? Agent is nothing but it's a... It's an intermediary between the, the, the game itself and the model. So the game is the snake moving around. The model is the, the entity that is learning uh, different things from the game. And uh, what does the agent do? Agent decides the action. So model will predict Q value. It does not mean that the highest Q value, whichever, whichever action has the highest Q value, it is selected. Uh, no, there is no such uh, no such thing. The mod, the agent can decide among these three Q values that uh, corresponding to three actions that the model has predicted, which which action to pick. So if the agent is kind of in an exploration uh, mood, agent will not necessarily pick the one with the highest Q value. It may pick some other random uh, one which may have the lowest Q value. Um, whereas if it's if the agent is in the exploitation stage model, the agent might decide to pick the one with the highest Q value. Then agent also updates the state of the game after each action. And why is this needed? Because if you want to send the detail to the, the next state or the vector corresponding to the next state to the learner, there has to be that state, the updated state. And who updates the state? The agent updates the state. And um, now the model has certain parameters, right? So the model has weights, bias, uh, anything else. Uh, activation function is already set, but basically the training has to be done so that you are modifying the weights and bias so that in the later iterations, if the similar state is coming or the model is experiencing a similar state, it can make a better prediction, right? So uh, the function of agent is also to train the model so that its weights can be updated via the Q learning process. So if the Q values that the model up model outputs is not really a good representative of the actual reward that the um, that the snake can get or the learner can get for a given action, then uh, there is a need for updating the model's weight and weights and bias, and that's what the agent does. So these are the functions. Now, what all things will uh, agent do as a responsibility? Agent will represent the state, meaning any given state it converts to a vector. Agent can also calculate the reward at any point uh, after an action is taken. It will decide if there is plus ten for 
eating food if that happened whether if a collision happens then minus 10 or if nothing happened neutral it's zero so it calculates the reward it also stores these state action uh, pair for at any given point and the reward obtained at any given point and also the next state uh, which happened or which occurred because of the state action pair in the previous step so all of these things are stored uh, stored by the uh, agent and where is this needed it's obviously needed in the training process of the neural network and uh, and the agent also instructs the model uh, when to learn from the stored experiences because the stored experiences are, are a part of the memory and the agent will ask the model to learn uh, according to uh, what the agent finds appropriate so of course agent is something that we define so we can define it in many different ways so uh, if you just look at the order in which agent will take certain actions first the agent will get the state represent the current state in the form of a vector then uh, agent will input the state into the model model will predict a certain set of q values corresponding to different actions then agent will decide what action to take among the among based on the q values or based on just randomness then agent will execute the action meaning the state of the game will change the snake may die snake may grow whatever then uh, this this updates the game and you get a new state right when the when the agent executes the action then agent calculates the reward corresponding to the just the previous action which was taken this determines the you know based on the outcome basically you are evaluating the outcome then agent stores the the experience that it learned from that particular uh, set action so it records the current uh, the, the state current state current action the reward that obtained as a result of the action and the state that resulted as a result of this action and then it trains the model so very uh, very simple nothing complicated here just you need to just understand uh, Please note one thing, uh, don't be, don't get confused with Q value versus reward. Reward is something that is immediate. So if the snake dies, immediately there is a minus 10 reward or a pun basically a punishment. If the snake grows by eating food, uh, there is immediately a plus 10 reward. So reward is obtained immediately after each action. There is zero minus 10 or plus 10 in this particular case. So it's kind of like a, a short term benefit or a short term uh, penalty. So, um, you, if you try to, let's say, uh, optimize for reward each time, you 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 may not be progressing so much. Um, so let's say uh, at each point you will think that okay, why should I take risk if 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 uh, in the short term I don't want to get a negative reward if if the uh, if the model decides that that is the better thing to do or if the agent decides that that's the better thing to do then uh, let's say the snake is going in certain loop it will continue to go in go in that loop because the agent learned that okay i'm not getting any negative reward this looks like fine right so that's uh, that so that is not always good so that it, because that is in short term that is fine but in long term you're not reaching anywhere you're you're not advancing in the game the q value on the other hand is like an expected long term value so uh, uh, you can see that in the q value calculation there is also a uh, a term involved which is the maximum possible uh, queue that you can obtain for a, a future state and a future action that you can you can take given the current state and action so uh, you are not trying to just maximize the instantaneous reward in a game you are trying to maximize the cumulative rewards so what do we mean by cumulative rewards uh, Let's say as a, as a player of the snake game, your goal is to not just eat one apple, not just to make the eat snake eat one apple. You want to eat, make the snake eat apples again and again and again uh, so that your, your personal best score, highest score is maximized, right? So that is what you call as the cumulative reward. So let's say you eat the apple 20 times, then your cumulative reward is 20 uh, uh, multiplied by let's say uh, uh, 10 because 10 is the reward per eating the apple but let's say in this process the snake was also dead um, 15 times then you have to subtract minus 150 right so the cumulative reward depends on not just the instantaneous reward it also depends on the uh, cumulative um, uh, punishments that you received so immediate reward has to be incorporated in your decision making expected future reward also has to be incorporated and this is done using something called as the bellman equation uh, whose uh, a, a small form you saw earlier so this is the difference between exploration and exploitation so in the beginning what do you want the model to do in the beginning you want the model which is the machine learning model to learn about this game as much as possible so if you give your mobile phone to a kid for the very very first time 
do you think when the kid is playing the snake game uh, he or she will think a lot the kid will randomly press the four buttons right up down left right kid will randomly keep pressing um, so the in the initial 10 15 20 times the kid has no idea it's it's still learning by by kind of exploring um, so this is exactly how we learn most of the games right as as kids um, we never looked at the game uh, gameplay manual we just randomly started playing and we figured it out so initially but but imagine initially we were not exploring all the different possible options in the game we will not become good at ga- good at playing that game exactly like that there is exploration meaning the mo- agent will not just focus on the uh, q values that are output by the model agent may take random decisions but eventually as the number of games played by the um, the learner increases agent will more and more and more decide that okay no more exploration meaning no more random actions i will take actions that are uh, very good very well rewarding this is exactly how as a kid learns to be good at snake game uh, how the kid will be playing eventually so the kid will be playing like this it will directly or you as a kid you will directly be going towards the snake uh, but initially you will be you will be going in random loops when you are learning the game and that's exactly this example that is showing here you can see that in one of the initial iterations the snake will i'll show you this uh, by executing this in the code if the learner in the initial few games collides a few times and if the snake is penalized minus 10 minus 10 minus 10 each time it makes a collision with itself or with the wall then slowly it may learn a new strategy which is like simply avoid crashing because if you avoid crashing the points which you get is zero if you collide you get minus 10 if you get a food you get plus 10 so my zero is preferable to minus 10 always right so that's what's happening here the snake is just rotating because it found that if you if it just goes in loops the score is zero um, it's not receiving any any penalty but you know this is uh, not good in the long term right so in the long term uh, uh, it's not also advancing anywhere in the game it's not learning anything so you have to decide at some point let's say after n number of steps if the snake is neither dying nor uh, increasing in its length you have to randomly take another uh, another action so that's the only way in which you can come out of this kind of an infinite loop where the model decides that okay let me stay in this loop so that i'm not uh, receiving any punishment so this is the difference between <clears throat> exploration and exploitation and how you can uh, leverage randomness to learn things faster at, at a certain point and then become uh, much more efficient and streamlined in your action taking so now let we'll explore the code we'll uh, we'll run the code and see how to um, how to play with it a little bit so i'll just to show you a snapshot of what all things are part of the code primarily we will uh, we'll have a definition of the agent of course this snapshot that i'm showing is not the complete code i'm just showing you so that later when i'm showing in the vs code you are not feeling intimidated so this is the agent definition this is the definition of the game itself uh, the part of the code and uh, we also will have the model which is the neural network so this is the other part of the code so uh, the courtesy for this code is from free code camp um, they have built this repo and they have hosted it on github i had to make a very few minor changes to make it um, you know supported on my machine uh, not because of my machine capability or anything i think it was more of a package issue so i will also be hosting a version of this code base on my own github repo and i'll be sharing the link with you so uh, now let's have a look at the code so this is the code let us start from scratch by just uh, closing everything we'll not be coding anything from scratch but we can run everything from scratch so initially uh, just go here snake game human dot pi and you can just click to run this so this is the human version of the snake game it will open a new window you can just click allow oh by the way i tried tried to run this in google collab but it was not working because this uh, snake game interface was not uh, working in collab so um so that's why i had to run it on my computer so i also recommend you to do the same so just uh, get this code from my github and then uh, you can open it using vs code visual studio code and you can run it so let me show show you by playing the snake game so this is the human i'm right now i am the one who is playing not ai that's why it's even in the first attempt it's playing you know it's not randomly moving anywhere i'm just directly trying to eat the food so you can see that i mean obviously i have played snake game before so i don't have any i don't need to but 
but it, it became game over right now so what happened is i accidentally pressed the back button for back button meaning if the snake was going in this direction i press the button to make it go in this direction it's not allowed uh, also it will die this window will close if if the snake hits the wall so you can see that here oh sorry i again click the opposite direction but let me hit a wall deliberately after eating some food so the length of the snake is increasing by one unit each time it eats the food. That's good. So see, I hit the wall and this and the game was over. So this is the human game. It just to get a get a you know uh, final record. So so far, I think the best I have managed to score is seven. I, of course, you can also try. It's not hard to score some. But basically, after that, there is model.py, helper.py, game.py, and agent.py. This model.py is the one where the definition of the neural network is there. Uh, you can you can just have a look at this to see the input layer, hidden layer, uh, and the output layer. Everything can be seen here. Uh, let's not go into the details of this because that's not the goal behind this particular video. But it's more to kind of give you a flavor of reinforcement reinforcement learning. So this is the model. Uh, helper is nothing but it's uh, it's for plotting. Uh, this is not really necessary right now. It's for plotting the evolution of the scores uh, the the maximum score uh, as the as the snake is learning again and again so i have commented most of this so it will just uh, right now it will just plot only like a white color plot because some of the libraries i think are outdated here so i rather than updating the library i decided okay let me not print any um, any plots right now the game.py is the actual game where we define the numbers for right, left, uh, etc. We define the canvas, which is to be displayed while playing the snake game. Canvas meaning the what we just saw. I have uh, modified the color of the canvas and all a little bit. I, I was just playing around. And uh, here it defines uh, everything with respect to the game. And uh, agent.py is... Uh, so agent is who calls the game as well as uh, helper for, for plotting. So you can see that helper is imported here. The game is imported here. Model is also imported here. And uh, agent is the one who is responsible for everything uh, from calculating the state, giving the input to the model, deciding from the output of the model what action to take, um, storing everything. So here you can also see this max memory is there. So this underscore is basically a way to visually show that um, you know when you write big numbers you put comma right uh, just so that you can see you can just count the number of zeros very easily so this underscore uh, it simply means even if you did not have this underscore it's basically the same thing but uh, you can put the underscore to define uh, like like this so that you can define the maximum memory it's like 100 uh, 100 it's i think 10 million right this number um, i think this is 10 million 100,000 multiplied by 100. Yeah, the batch size is 100. Learning rate is 0 0.001. This is that alpha which you saw earlier in the equation. And agent define, defines many different things. So now let's run this agent first to see what's happening. So when I run the agent, it runs the game. It runs the helper. So this is now the snake uh, playing the game. Let me just move this here. Maybe increase the size if possible. Okay, I'm not sure if, if it's possible. Anyways, uh, I'll just place it here. So you can see what's happening initially. The score is zero and snake is randomly taking actions. Uh, it's not even able to find the food. Okay, now it just found the food. Uh, there is a count of the number of games here. I hope you can see this, uh, this, this screen. I'm just increasing the font size. So here it's counting the number of games. Um, so right now it's 17 games. The record so far is one, meaning the snake has not been man, uh, able to manage to eat even a single, like even two two times the apple simultaneously. Um, and the the random infinite loop rotation you will see. Sometimes the snake will end up just rotating just like that, like a madman. Uh, sometimes it goes to the corners and it just rotates, keep on rotating from there uh, for, a, for a few number of moves. So currently the record is three, as you might have noticed, it's slowly increasing. Uh, the snake has played 29 games so far. What I will do is um, I just want to show you one instance of the snake. This just doing in, doing something in loops. Yeah, you see snake is just rotating in loop. Um, I just want to show you once when it gets stuck, uh, but that's OK. Uh, what I'll do is I'll pause here. Then I'll come back when once around 75, 80 games are finished because I have generally noticed that once the snake plays around 80, 85 games, it becomes really good. 
uh, it really it becomes really good at going directly at the food so i'll just pause the video so that it's not becoming unnecessarily long and i'll come back once this game number of games is instead of 40 41 it's like 80 85 all right so now 92 games 94 games have finished and look at the record now the record is 48 so if you if you see the scroll here it's it's jumping right uh, it's learning so fast to improve its own record and now you can see that snake is not moving randomly anymore it's very very target oriented it's directly moving towards the food and even if the food is in some corner or uh, at close to the edge it can it can easily detect it and it can move and uh, do its job uh, it's in fact even playing faster and better than a human uh, like if i had a snake that was this long i don't think i would have been able to play it this well so it's very very good you can see see it's, it's amazing i mean what reinforcement learn, learning is capable to do uh, so just do this ju just you know uh, copy my like clone my repo or fork it and then uh, try this out yourself it's a beautiful way to truly understand the capability of ai to kind of learn games and through this method as you might have uh, probably thought this is not just confined to snake game you can basically play play any game in this format so any game using this q, q learning approach using agents you can learn to play any games as long as you can define the controls define the state uh, define the action and the reward so this is just a very simple uh, uh, explanation of or, or uh, demonstration of how it can be done um, but I, I highly recommend you to just you know play with this code but this approach can be even uh, applied to even much more mini number of uh, games you may have heard of ai beating the best possible human best best human player in the in the dota defense defense of the ancients game so you can you can do many such uh you can play many such games using such uh, agent based approach so thank you for listening in to this lecture uh, to this video uh, we'll see again with such interesting topics again in the next lecture see you